Uh, we thank everybody for coming. Appreciate you guys coming out and being with us. Uh, we've worked really hard on this play uh, for the last couple months and uh, been down here all week doing a lot of the decorating and everything. And I know this looks funny with somebody with all this on. Come back and welcome you to church. But uh, we just want to make you feel welcome. And you get right into the service tonight. Hopefully we'll do something that'll be a blessing to you, okay? Uh, you guys sit in prayer for our kids. Our young kids are going to do a couple of songs for you. And uh, their older kids are going to come out and do a couple after that. And then we're going to get right into uh, our play. But uh, pray for these kids. Uh, they're, going to, they're going to do some drama songs for you that has got everything in the world to do with what this is, uh, this is about. It's about Easter. About the, our risen Savior. Amen. We serve a risen Savior. And He's overcome death, hell, and the grave. And that's the message we want to get across tonight is your consequence. Now, what you're going to see in this play, like I was telling them back here just now, uh, is this how it's going to be? Probably not. <laughs> but we want to get a message across to you guys of the, the rewards versus the consequences of how you live your life now. Okay? So that's the message we want to get across to you guys tonight. And anybody here wants to pray at any time tonight, you, we, will, we will stop this play and have prayer with you, okay, amen? Get you get a hold of your neighbor, whatever, pray right there in your seat. That's perfectly fine too, amen? That's what we're here for is to see lost souls saved. And you guys just pray for these kids. We're going to get right into the drama, okay? Make it welcome.
praises One day when sin was as black as could be Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin Dwelt among men Example is He. The Word became flesh. The light shined among us. His glory revealed. Living, He loved me. Dying, He saved me. The belly He carried. My sins far away. Rising, He He hath no form nor comeliness. And we, when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. For he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. 
Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes we are healed. All oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. Get the word. Get the word. I'm not sorry. My turn. Get the word. Everybody, you stay clear. Clean again. 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 Clean Look at all that us go. Look at him. 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 I can't stand it. I, oh, I Nobody come near. Oh, he's nailing him, look. Look at him now, people. Your king. Oh, Here's your king. Here's your king. Oh, look at him. Oh, 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 oh
Lord, I didn't speak the Son of God.
It's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter is asleep. Judas is betrayed. But Sunday is coming. It's Friday. Pilate's struggling. The council is conspiring. The crowd is vilified. They don't even know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary is crying. Peter is denied. But they don't know that Sundays are coming. It's Friday. The Romans beat my Jesus. They robe him in scar. They crown him with thorns. But they don't know that Sundays come. It's Friday. See Jesus walking to Calvary. His blood dripping. His body stumbling. And his spirit's burden. But you see, it's only Friday. Sunday's come. It's Friday. The world's winning. People are sinning. And evil's grinning. It's Friday. The soldiers nailed my Savior's hands to the cross. They nailed my Savior's feet to the cross. And then they raised him up next to criminals. It's Friday. But let me tell you something. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are questioning what has happened to their king. And the Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved. But they don't know. It's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. He's hanging on the cross, feeling forsaken by his father, left alone and down. Can nobody save him? Oh, it's Friday, but Sunday's come. It's Friday, the earth trembles, the sky grows dark, my king yields his spirit. It's Friday, hope is lost, death has won, sin has come, and Satan's just a laugh. It's Friday, Jesus is buried, a soldier stands God, and a rock is rolled into place. But it's Friday. It is only Friday. Sunday is a cup. Still have Jesus 
When did you set him free? This is now the first day They laid him in the ground Tell me death, oh tell me Can you hold him down? Can you hold him down? Satan, oh Satan Satan, hear me well I promise, oh I promise That I shall not fail Tell me, this is the second day. Do you still have Jesus, or did he get away? Did he get away? Satan, oh Satan, hear me now once more. The greatest kings and rich men have walked in my dark door. This Jesus, he's no different. He's just a mortal man. And I make this vow to you He won't escape my hand He won't escape my hand Tell me, yes, tell me Tell me, don't be slow Do you still have Jesus? Or did you let him go? He's been dead for three days Victory is won It's time for celebration We've overcome God's son. We've overcome God's <laughs> Satan, oh Satan, hear me what I say. This morning, oh, this morning, the storm was rolling. The books were open. And another book was open, which was the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things, 
which were written in those books. According to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in them. Death and hell gave up the dead which were in them. They were judged, every man, according to their works. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times nor the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. And they said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing into heaven? This same Jesus, which was taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. I feel so young. Thank you, Jesus. 
angel. I know my name is written in the book of life. I have served the Lord since I was a child. Oh, hurry. I want to see my Jesus. It was worth serving the Lord all these years. Hey, all you need is what I got in these little white packages. You can eat it, snort it, chew it, whatever you like. How does that sound? Great, but uh, we ain't got no money. <clears throat> yeah, we're broke, Dave. Busted. It's okay. It's on me. Really? Hey, you're talking to Junior Dave. The first one is always for you. Thank you, Dave. Hey, and I'll tell you what else I'll do. I'll put your names in my book of life. What's your name, honey? Skyler, S-K-Y-L-E-R. What's your phone number? Nine three six two four one one. And what's your name, sir? Cassie with a K. And what's your phone number? <laughs> three four six five nine nine zero. And what's your name, honey? Haley H A L E Y. And what's your phone number? Nine two three eight five five seven. Okay, from now on, your name is in my book, and that's the only book of life that you ever have to worry about. And if your life's ever needed rest, just call Junior State, and I'll be here with all, all, all kinds of drugs that you need. So keep smiling. So keep smiling. So I gotta go. There's other ladies like you need my magic touch. And remember, ladies, my salvation comes in little white packages. Bye, Dave. Boy, he's cute, huh? Man, my head's just killing me. I gotta sit down. Hey, why don't we try some of this stuff? No way. That is, that's too heavy for me. Come on, everybody's doing it. And it ain't hurting nobody. Nah, I don't think so. <laughs> well, you are our best friend, aren't you? Well, yeah. And you wouldn't want us to, to do this alone now, would you? <laughs> okay, fine. You're just a chicken. We'll find somebody else to do it with us. No, no, no. Wait. Okay, okay. I'll do it. I'll do it. Just don't leave me here alone, okay? okay. But, uh, are you sure you know what you're doing? <laughs> Listen, I saw him all the way and he did this a million times. <laughs> Ow! It's too tight! Listen, it's got to be tight. Come on, quit whining. Wow. Are you done yet? 
done yet? <laughs> I feel good. Do you? You don't feel good yet? Yeah. Stuff. You know, it relaxes. Yeah, but you know you're not supposed to be using your iPod yet. You think I care what the captain says? And what's all this honey stuff? You've never called me honey. Well, you sure have changed. I hope Aunt Jean hasn't rubbed off on you. Yes, I have changed. Something fantastic has happened to me. And what's that? Well, you know, Sunday when you and Uncle Jim went and played golf? Oh, yeah, he cheats too. 
<laughs> yeah, well, Aunt Jean, she and I went to. Aunt Jean, Aunt Jean, yeah, I knew it. Well, anyway, Aunt Jean and took me to her church. And I accepted Jesus as my personal Savior. You done what? You went and got religion on me? Can't you do anything right? Next you'll be acting like just like her saying, I can't smoke and I can't drink. You'll be talking about Jesus all the time. Calm down, honey. Calm down. Everybody's looking at us. I don't care. What are you all looking at? <laughs> <laughs> Let me explain, okay? Ever since I accepted Jesus into my life, I've had this wonderful peace, a peace that I just can't explain. And you know, I've been thinking that maybe you should consider changing. You're under a lot of stress. And you have a lot of stress at work. Maybe you should accept God into your life as your personal Savior. God. This is God money. This is God. <laughs> How do you think you got this nice vacation? the BMW and the big nice house. And by the way, I went to the store the other day and bought a magazine and a CD about meditation becoming your own God. What's wrong? What's wrong, honey? <laughs> oh, what's wrong, miss? I have such things. You're trying to meditation to become your own God. Don't mock God. This is God. Jesus, help us. Help us, Jesus. Hey, we're all going to die. It's been four years since my mom has passed away. Please let my name be in that book. Please, angels. Please. I need to see my mom. Please let my name be in our angels. Please. Please let my name be in You can have a thousand gods, and they'll all leave you. <laughs> Demons, get it. Throw him into hell. Please, <laughs> please, Meditation. Bye. 
Honey, what's for dinner today? You know how it is at our house on Sundays. Trying to get ready for church. And everybody get here on time. I just forgot to put anything on to eat. I'm sorry. What do you think about that church service today? It was spirit filled from the beginning to the end. But all I could think about was the accident that took our little Adeline away from us. But I know that if I stayed on the path that I'm going now, that I'll see her again in heaven. Honey, that's okay. I, you know, I really miss her. I'd come home from work, get out of the truck. Lord, she would come busting out of the house, sir, and give me the biggest old hug you ever was. I really do miss her quite a lot. How much was in Sunday school today, Maggie? There were 150 in Sunday school today, Dad. Our room was just packed. Thank you, Dad, for taking me to the altar today. Son, I'm really proud of you. You know, it takes a real man to go to the altar. <coughs> do you think uh, Adeline would be proud of you? Yes, honey, I know that she'd be proud of you. And I know that she's waiting on us and she make us a complete home prayer. points tonight, I'll give you $20. How's that sound? Great. I bet I can get 10 points in the first quarter. A real chip off the old block. <laughs> so, what did you think of uh, the Sunday school service this morning? I really enjoyed it. I even wanted to go forward and ask Christ into my heart, but I know she's never gone forward. Well, come on, son. Your mom, she goes to church Sunday morning, again on Sunday night, and then she even goes on Wednesday. The way I see it, she has enough religion for the whole family. Well, I guess you're right. Religion is more for girls than it is for boys. Now, I didn't say that. But if I spend all my time at church instead of at work, then how could we afford to drive this new car or live in that new house we just bought last year? And then a dirt bike you just bought me last week. Now you're starting to see the picture. <clears throat> You don't need religion to make it through this world. These two hands is what got us everything that we have. That's what you need to learn is how to work, how to be a man. Yeah, when I grow up, I want to be just like you. That's right, son. Look out, man, look out. Ah!
not sure, but I think this is the place your mother talked about. And I've made a terrible mistake, Brett. We do need religion. We didn't just need all the material things. We needed the Lord as well. Oh, how I wish you'd given your life to the Lord this morning. Your mom, she also spoke of a book that your name had to be written in. The book of life. Angel, I'm sure my name isn't there, but my son, he's just a boy. Please, Angel, tell me my son's name is in the book of life. my husband was leaving me? Where was Jesus when my son was dying from a drug overdose? Yeah. Where were you, Jesus? Well, I'll show him. I'll show every one of them. Thank <laughs> you. 
She prayed for me. That's got to count for something, Angel. Angel, please, check the book. See if my name's in that book, please, Angel. I know, I know I've done a lot of things wrong, but please, Angel, please, tell me my name's in that book. Oh. <laughs> To life after death. No, I'm so please, glad you no. came. <laughs> no, Demons, get her. No, throw her in the hell. Evolution. You know that really only means that I'm just a victim. Your imagination. <laughs> I like that. I'm going to use that.
somebody tell me what I'm supposed to do. Will somebody please help me? I should never listen to those hypocrites. Angel, who's my name in that book? It's just got to be there. I'm an all-around good person. I work really hard. I try my best. Please let it be in that book. It's just got to be in that book. Please let it be there. Really? <laughs> no. no. Hello, honey. No. <laughs> I'm so glad you didn't want to sit in church with the hypocrites. <laughs> I love hypocrites. No. No. <laughs> now you're going to spend eternity with them. No. Burn them in hell. Demons. No. Get them. No. Throw her into the pits. You <laughs> got lots of time now, honey. You <laughs> got lots of time now. <laughs> Peter Patter, little feet round all over the house again. 
I tell you what, if you're right, you're going to lay down straight and you can get it. I'll share my lunch with you. You mean by Christianity and giving my life over to the Lord? Uh, I don't know, Pete. I've been thinking an awful lot about it, you know. But I don't know, it just seems so simple, man. I mean, it's almost like child's play. Well, if I remember right, the Bible says if you come unto Christ as a child, He'll let you enter His kingdom. But I mean, that's, that's eternal life with God. Won't you give your life over to Jesus right now? Oh, you mean right now? Hey, bring all these men? Are you crazy? There ain't no way. Butch, listen. There's a lot more people here when I got saved than what they are right now. In fact, there's a few of these guys there. But, you know, I really wanted it that day. You know, I... Every, every word that was preached, it sounded like it was preached right at me. You know, I, I spent all my life, you know, who was there with you every night when we get off work? We had to go take the edge off. We'd go drink a couple beers. Had those feet right there with me. Remember on the weekends, we had every excuse in the world for a party. You know, football, baseball, figure skating, barbecue, it doesn't matter. We got them up with something. Yep. Good time. You know, it was, it was hard going through life like that. I got tired of getting up every day, feeling alone. You know, I'd, I'd leave your house and I'd go home to nobody. And I thought, well, maybe that's the, maybe that's the life right there. You know, I have a wife, kids, the whole what, nine yards. So, you know, I set out on this, on this big great plan, you know, to, to find a family. You know, God really intervened. So he sent me ahead. She's such a wonderful lady. Mm -hmm. She's so caring and loving. And uh, she even goes to church. So when she was going to church, I was with her just to make her happy. You know, we went through uh, some bad times, some good times. Yeah. You know, I still had my problems. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she trusted me an awful lot. So she sang something to me that I didn't even know existed myself. You know, she trusted God so much that she went ahead and married me. And to, keep, and to keep her happy, I started going to church with her. Well, you can't believe it. There came a time for the outer call. She'd reach over and she'd say, you want to go? I'd say, no, woman, get off. I'm not done. You know. I had all this pride built up in me, it's too embarrassing. You know, you said no very easy blue to the seat, to the floor, you couldn't move. There wasn't no way I was getting up going forward. <clears throat> then one night, I was sitting there, and I heard that little soft voice that just called my name, told me to come forward. You know, I, I gave away and went up there. That's the best decision I ever made in my life. It but was? It was. You know, Jesus, he was a sinless man. He was even a carpenter, too. You know, God loved us so much that he sent his only son to die on the cross for me. For everybody. All mankind. Jesus did? Yep. All we got to do is just ask for forgiveness. It's that simple. The cool thing about it, when he went on the cross, he didn't just die for our sins. We have another gift called eternal life. You know, 
Not only did he die, he also rose again three days later. He said in his word that he would go prepare a place for us in heaven. Then one day he came back for us. Then one day when they had that song of invitation, you know, just as I am without one plea, but that Jesus' blood was shed for me. You know, I I realized all God wanted me to do was make that step of faith by accepting Christ as my Lord and Savior. It made a tremendous difference in my life. <clears throat> You know what, Pete? I can sure see a difference in you, man. I mean, I, I remember how it used to be with me and you. You know, we would we would get all the guys together and we'd go out on the town and we'd get three sheets in the wind. You remember that? Yeah, I remember everything. Okay, man, you remember come Monday, we had to get up and go to work again. Three shades of green. <laughs> Yep. You remember that? I remember that too. <laughs> you know, Pete, it's Jesus. Is that what put the smile on your face? It sure was. But I tell you what, it was joy and happiness. I mean, don't get me wrong. It don't take away all your problems. But it's a whole lot easier to get through life's problems with Jesus on your side. I know, Pete, but hey, man, look here. This is so good you're talking to here. I mean, I don't even know how to pray, man. Well, I didn't mean it. But you know what the cool thing was? <coughs> they, they led me in a prayer. And you know, Butch, I'd be glad to lead you in that prayer right now. But you really got to mean it. You would do that for me? I sure would, but. You mean you would pray with me right now? I sure would, right here. It don't matter where you at. Anywhere you drop your knees is the Even here on the job? Right here. You would do that for me? I sure would. Pete, I think I'd like that. All right. I think I'm ready. Dear Lord. Dear Lord. I come to you as a sinner. I come to you as a sinner. Lord. I believe that you sent your son to die for all men's sins. I believe you sent your son to die for all men's sins. <coughs> Lord, I ask you right now to come into my life. Lord, I beg you right now to come into my life. Lord, I'm willing to be a willing vessel for you to use. And I am willing to be a willing vessel for you to use. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. See, so it's just that simple, but. Oh, man. Hey, I'll tell you. Now, I felt this good since I was that tall. I mean, I never knew I could. What's that? Hit the wall! Ah! Hey, wait a minute. 
that He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus, that whosoever will believe in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You don't have to go to hell. You have a choice to make. Won't you make the choice to make heaven your home? Tonight, we did our very best to try to show every one of you in here tonight what your decisions every day may lead to in the end. There is only two destinations, heaven or hell. This play was put on tonight to demonstrate every walk of life that we possibly could to show you that the road that you're on, if you're in here and you're unsafe, is leading to an awful place called hell. Hell was not prepared for you. It was prepared for the devil and his angels, but the Bible said it's enlarging itself every day. And the reason that it's enlarging itself is because people are rejecting the Son of God as they go into the churches and the altar call is given and asking you, would you please come forth and give your life to Jesus and change the way that the devil is leading you down life's way. People are walking out and saying, no, I don't want no part of it. And because of that, hell has enlarged itself. The Bible said it's rising up to meet people at their coming. Don't let that be you tonight. You're in this building. I know there's a house full of people in here that need Jesus in your life. If you're here and you're lost, we want to give you an invitation to come forth tonight and give your life to Jesus. This little play is just a foretaste of what it's actually going to be like. I'm telling you guys, you need to make preparations because Jesus is coming soon. When He left this world, He said, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place, I will come again and receive you unto Myself that where I am, there ye may be also. He's coming just any day now. Look around you at the shape that the world's in today, friends. It's falling apart. You can't put your trust in politicians. You can't put your trust in government. You can't put your trust in the things in the world. But you can put your trust in Jesus today. He will never let you down. He will always be there in your darkest hours of life. He will be there for you. And it's, I'm not going to tell you every problem is just going to vanish away like some big uh, miracle happened all of a sudden. But I'm going to tell you this much. You will have somebody that you can go to that will always be there. Listen to what Jesus said. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will go with you all the way even until the end of the world. Let me tell you and say, the end of the world for you is when death knocks at your heart's door. One way or the other, you're leaving here. You can't stay here. Make preparations tonight, would you? Make some arrangements to go to that land where Jesus said, I will go prepare for you. Get right with God. I can't put it any other way except to say if you're in this building and you're lost, you're in the right place at the right time because he said, behold, I stand at the heart's door and knock. And if anybody will open up the door, I'll come in and sup with them and he can sup with me. Amen. Having Amen. supper with Jesus is a great thing, I'm going to tell you. Amen. When you go into Father's house and you feel the Holy Spirit down on the inside and the presence of the Holy Ghost begins to move Seems like all your troubles are just vanish away. This is the place. This is the time. If you hear His voice, harden not your heart. I'm going to ask somebody to get a song. And I'm going to ask you unsaved. Do you want to go to heaven? Because if you do, 
there's something that you must do. The Bible said, unless you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Let me show you how easy it is to get saved. Kneel on your knee, right in the seat where you are. He'll hear you. Kneel on your knee and say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry I sinned against you. Save me and make me one of your children. And He'll come in and He'll save you and clean you up. Let me tell you something. When you wake up in the morning, you all want a drink of liquor. You all want a pill. You all want all the things that this old world is offering you. The only thing you want to do is say, Thank you, Jesus, for the light of another day. Will you come? Will you come? Has this, has this touched you any at all tonight? Did, did it demonstrate anything? Maybe that's going on in your life. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Keep coming. Come on. Come on. Don't let the devil defeat you any longer. Come on, I say. Let me tell you, Jesus may come tonight. And if he does, you're going to be left behind. But all of God's people that never see his coming in the blood of the Lamb, we're going to rise up to meet Jesus in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Come on. While the Spirit is knocking at your heart, while he's saying, come to me, slip out of your seat. Reach over and get somebody by the hand and say, come and pray with me. Come on. Come on. Don't let the devil defeat you. That's his job. You saw the demonstration that we tried to show you. He laughs at you when fear and calamity come upon you. He'll mock you if you die lost without Jesus. He'll laugh all the time that the demons are getting you and cast you into the lake of fire. Come on. Come on. Do you want to be saved? I've had people raise their hand in church and say, Oh, I really want to be saved. What do you do? Now's the time. He said, Behold, now is the day of salvation. You hear his voice, harden not your heart. Come on, don't harden your heart against him. So now you're saying, Come on. Get the victory out of these young ladies on. It don't matter what you've done, it don't matter where you've been, it don't matter how you're living. Jesus will make a change in your life. He'll change it every bit. He'll make a way where there seems to be no way. Why don't you come and say, I'm going to tell you something. One second after death overtakes you, you'll wish that you accepted this invitation. One second after you leave this world, you'll open your eyes in a place called hell. And it's not even meant for you. God so loved the world. He gave His only Son. Come on. Come on. Come on.
God bless you, young lady. Are you happy for this? Yes. Come on, give God a I just wonder how many Christians in the house with the night just lift up your voice and say praise the Lord about that three times.
children. Don't you wish you could go back to the faith you had when you was a child? Life has probably been cruel to some of you. It's probably dealt with some pretty rough cards. Some of you probably feel like the scene where uh, my sister Judy over here was saying, why should I live any longer? Everything just fell apart, you know, and, and might as well just kill myself. And ain't no use to live anymore. You might be feeling that way today. But I'm going to tell you something. Jesus can change all that. He can change all that. He can give you a brand new outlook on life. But you got to trust Him. you got to come and trust Him. He is the one, my friend, that walked on the water. He's the one that opened up the blinded eyes. He's the one that raised the dead and gave sight to those that couldn't see and hearing to those that couldn't hear. Brother Allen, He is the one that is able, and He's the only one that is able, to save your soul tonight. There's no other way you can get to heaven except through and by Jesus Christ. He went to Calvary. You know where Calvary is? Even I say, I'm asking you, do you know where that is? That's a mountain called the Place of the Skull over in Jerusalem. And he took an old wooden cross and carried it up that mountain and laid his life down and allowed them to nail him to an old rugged cross for your sins. Not because of any sins that he done, for your sins. And from the cross, he looked up into the heavens and he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Even on the cross, He was praying for you, asking for your forgiveness. But you need to do something about that today. You need to accept Him and come and say, Lord, I want to serve you. I want to be a Christian. If you don't like the Lord, I guarantee you, He'll take you back. The old devil will take you right back if you don't like what you get. Come on, I'm going to give you just a couple more minutes. And we're going to wrap this up. Just a couple more minutes. Those two minutes might determine where you stand eternity. You might say, I ain't going tonight. How do you know you're not going to be in a car wreck? How do you know you're not going to be some drastic uh, thing out there that will take you out of this world? How do you know? You know what James said? Man's life is even as a vapor appeared for a short time then back to the you could leave her like that. You're one brain and one heartbeat away from hell. And I'm trying everything I know to keep you from going to that place. I do not want to see you go to hell. Was it God's will? Was it God's will for anyone to die and go to that place called hell? It was God's will for you to be saved. Let whosoever will come unto me, and I will give him life. Do you want it? All I know is I can't make it. you like that little baby angel? She's cute, doesn't she? Well, heaven's full of it. I'll be on the other day I was laying. I don't about 4.30 in the morning and I got to think about the rapture. See, I've got two sons that fall straight. And I was thinking about the rapture. How quick. We can all be taken out of here, children. I'm talking about the children of God now. And these little children would go with us. Because they're innocent. They don't know any sin. They would go with us. And I thought about the chaos that would happen on the following day or maybe the very day. People would say, where's mom? Where's dad? Where's grandma? Grandpa? Where's all those crazy Christians that gathered up that Lundell and used to jump and holler and run and shout? Where'd they go? For They'll be searching all over the place. Scientists will try to come up with some kind of scientific theory of what happened. Spaceship come, robbed all the graves, and took them all. But I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Jesus said, I will descend from heaven with the voice of an archangel and the trump of God. And I will declare sin and Christ come forth and all those that are in the grave will come forth into the resurrection of life and we that are alive today will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye and rise up together with them to be the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Hey children, it's almost home time. But we ought to get happy tonight. We know every single living and he's coming for us. Come on, why don't you Talking to you. I know the devil's in here. And perhaps 
While she finishes that song. Why don't you feel it? While she finishes that song. Mamas, I know you love these little babies. But if the Lord comes tonight and little babies will be taken and you'll be left behind. The only way you'll ever see them again is to get right with God. Come on. You can't make it without the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise for all who can come to the altar, would you? I know there's probably some 9 o'clock Baptists in here. Just bear with us, okay? Just a little Baptist joke there. They, they put some humor in this play. They, they were some things that we got to laugh about. But on a serious note, they demonstrated heaven or hell. The choice is yours. Jesus already paid the price. It don't cost you nothing. You don't have to give all your money to the church. You don't. You don't have to be high up on the ladder uh, among respect among people. You don't have to be uh, way out there somewhere to where everybody knows your name and just kind of worship you as you walk by. You don't have to be none of that. As a matter of fact, I'd rather be who I am, just a little old sinner saved by grace. Amen. Amen. I'd rather just be a little sinner saved by grace. I don't want to be nothing big in this life. I want to be humble where God can use me. And you that are here tonight, I'm going to keep praying for you. This church is going to keep praying for you. This playcast is going to keep praying for you. We may not know all your names, but I'm going to tell you, there's one in heaven that knows everyone that's in this room tonight. And he knows your heart. We're going to keep praying. You know what I'm going to pray? God, be merciful and give them another opportunity somewhere. Give them another opportunity, Lord. I'm ready to go. If Jesus would come tonight, I'm ready to go. But I say wait a little longer, please, Jesus. I got a few more loved ones that need to get in. But if he comes tonight, I'm going. Woo! I'm going. I'm going to leave here with a shout. Guarantee. You'd have me like this little child here and worship God. All right, we want to thank Brother Kevin. Where did he go? He's around here somewhere. We want to thank Brother Kevin. Oh, outside over there. Okay. Uh, as the play director, we want to thank all of our play cast. We have some beautiful little angels up here and some beautiful big angels too, did not we? Y'all like to hear stories about miracles. Can I tell you one really, really quick? Come here, Joe. Right here is 16 time miracles. Amen. Cancer. Doctors looked at her and said, you got cancer. She'd come to the church and say, well, you guys need to know what me pray for me because they said I got cancer again. She'd go back to the doctor, come back to the church and say, guess what? It's gone! Yeah. Six feet down in the road. That's the God we serve. That's our Lord right there. That's our Lord. And everyone in here could probably tell you miracles. You want to say something to him about that? I just thank the Lord for everything He's done for me. He's brought me to me many a thing for 23 years. Yeah. Amen. Thank the Lord. Proud of mine, I thank the Lord has got something in store for me. Amen. 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 He absolutely does. He got something in store for every child of God in here. Put a smile on your face. Don't let the world get you down. We're almost summer. We're almost there, folks. Hold on. If you're a child of God, hold on like you've never held on before. If you're not a child of God, you better get ready. You better make preparations because He's coming soon. Can I thank every one of you from the bottom of my heart for coming tonight. Uh, I was told that there was people pulled in that couldn't even get to a parking place or couldn't even get into church. And I'm very sorry for that. We extended the church a little bit as some of you might have noticed. But... Looks like if we keep on doing this, we may have to go this way next time. So you guys be praying about that. And, and thank you for the representation of every church that's here. I can't name all of you. I know Saunders is back there. There's some from Beck O. And there's some from uh, uh, Gilbert Way. What's the name of it again? Davin. Yeah. And Davin. Okay. We thank you, every one of you. And Grace Way, where y'all's from, right? Okay. We just thank you from the depth of our heart. And... Uh, we love you. I, I'd like to invite you to come to worship services with us here. 
We have services on Tuesday night at 7, Sunday school at 10.30, and every first Sunday of the month we have 2 o'clock service with visiting ministers that come in. Van Collins is going to be here tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Everybody loves Van Collins, right? Well, he's going to be here tomorrow night. And then Brother Robbie Hawkins is going to be here the next weekend. So we got a good lineup and invite you to come. And if you ain't got nowhere to go on Easter Sunday, come on out. We'll set chairs out for you. Well, thank Brother Dave for videoing this for us. Thank you, Brother Dave, Dave for videoing. A lot of people on the internet want to see it. Amen. Amen. A lot of people. All right, before we dismiss, one more round of applause for the Lord tonight. Amen. You want to say anything? And I do think we had an uh, anonymous person donate the lights. And the mics, and we want to thank them for it. We go to ball games, and this and that, we make all kinds of racket. Oh, yeah. You know, I think this little crap was a bit too quiet. You know, get a little bit too Why not get a little round? We need a little round. Come on, let's go. Here this church rock is up here. We're going to not stand. We're going to not stand. We're going to not stand. Amen. Amen. That's right. 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 I don't care what sin you've done in this whole world, except the blessed thing is God, He'll forgive you. Yes, He will. He will forgive you. That's what He died for. Right. It says, if you lost your age, be this way. If you leave here tonight, don't wait to come to another church, sir. If God gets on your heart while you're going down the road, do it. Hey, I got to say, from the back side of a mountain. Amen. Amen.
I look back and look on the faces, and the Spirit bears witness, and I can see we're not taking this serious enough. Listen, do you do you think we come up here and we put on this play for show for ourselves? If you do, you're sadly mistaken. We don't do this for ourselves. We've done this to try to get a message across to you guys. As I said when I, when I opened, to get a message across to you, the, the, the rewards of hell, the consequences of hell, of what how you live your life today is going to dictate what happens in the afterlife. Okay? Let me tell you something. Anybody that's here and you're lost, I know it's late, I know we're running a lot of time, whatever, but God's it's all God's time anyway. I want you to know if you're lost here tonight, I don't believe, like I said, I just don't feel like you're taking it serious enough. This is a very serious thing. One day this is going to be a reality. And what you see here ain't going to compare to what it's going to be like. Amen. The beauties of heaven, oh, it's so beautiful. So many jewels, so many mansions, streets of gold, walls of jasper gates of pearl. It's going to be so awesome. You're going to see your loved ones there that's gone on before. And I'm going to tell you this, like we say at every funeral, Bobby preaches. If you ever want to see your loved ones again, you know what you got to do. You've got to get your life ready. you got to get your heart out. And you've got to make things right. If you don't, you're not going to see them. Just think about that. Think about that. Let that sink in. You're not going to see them again. Amen? Because you're going to be in hell burning for eternity. And you're going to be able to see them. But they're going to be rejoicing. They're not going to know anything about you didn't make it. Amen? Amen. Take it serious. And if you want to get saved here, we're still here. Amen? Amen. It's still, still time. It's not It's not too late. Amen? Amen. So I sing this song, and I just want to praise him for what he's already done here and the blessings that he's been poured out. Amen? Amen. Go ahead. Amen. 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 This life is a journey of my faith. There will always be the mountains in our way. Oh, right here in this moment, may I shrink be renewed. Everybody here found joy in the 
knew God would finish it. I felt it inside me. I knew He would finish it. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you happy for this young lady? There's several more of you in here that I looked at your face. God's looking from heaven. And I can see that the Spirit is dealing with you. I can see you're wretched and miserable. You're running from the Lord. I remember when I was running from the Lord, I, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat good or good. I was wretched. And I was miserable. But Lord, when I came down to this altar and said, Lord Jesus, save me. Seemed like a weight of the world was lifted off of my shoulders. Everything looked so bright, so pretty, just like you did up here. And I'm going to tell you something. I look back at people and everybody in that church looked like they were the same to God. I didn't see any fault in nobody. That's what God will do for you. He'll cleanse you up and make a brand new creature. Amen. He's going to sing another one. Kevin's going to sing one more. Okay. I don't think nobody's in no hurry. Thank you, Jesus. Molly, sing. You think about it, okay? Think about everything you've seen here tonight. Everything that's been said. Make a decision. And I hope you make the right one. If you walk out that door lost, you made the wrong.
Father, we believe in Jesus Christ, we believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. in this house. We'll come down here and repent. Yes. Praise God. We got Sunday school in the morning at 10.30. And I, I guess a bunch of us are going to stay around and get this put back together here. <laughs> I ain't going to do it by myself. <laughs> we'll have Sunday school like this tomorrow. Depends on me. <laughs> but a bunch of us are going to stay here and get church back together. But 10.30 in the morning, if you ain't got nowhere to go to Sunday school, you're welcome to come here. Uh, someone told me the other day, I, I think I met them down at Logan Hospital, and they said, well, we're, me and my wife's not going to church anywhere. And that's where you're welcome to come and worship with us if you want to. I just might take you up on it. So I hope that they did. Because we need to go to church and we need to go to God's house and be fed God's Word. That's how we grow in the Lord. That's where the food comes from. When, when the Holy Spirit, as He said, we believe in the Holy Spirit. When He gives it to that minister and He gives it to you, that's where that food comes from. So thank God for Brother Chet and his family back there. Uh, we're happy for every one of them. Anybody else have anything you want to say really quick? Right. right. we got a revival coming up on the 4th of April uh, with Brother Wayne Runyon. We'll be here and we're going to have a revival for that week. So we'd like to invite every one of you to come back to that revival. Let's all stand. We'll reference the Lord. I know everybody's a little weary and maybe getting tired of it. I can stay here all night as far as this goes, as long as people keep coming to this altar. We're going to reference the Lord. We're going to ask my brother James Dale is back here to dismiss us in a word of prayer. And thank God for the ones that got saved. Thank you, Heavenly Father, once again for this call. Each and every one, Lord, in this day. In Jesus' sweet, one thing we ask you all. Amen. Good night, everybody.